Hey guys, Ivan here, and in today's video we get a couple of very interesting bodybuilding updates and some announcements. And one of them, the first one, is an announcement of my own. As you guys just saw this intro video, I am now officially sponsored by the Hostile Supplements. As you guys probably know, I worked with the old school labs for I don't even know how long, and in the end the company was sold. And honestly guys, I don't think there is a better fit for me than the Hostile Supplements. You guys probably know that I'm a huge fan of Fuad's podcast and everything Fuad is doing, everything he did for the sport of bodybuilding. I've been following him since he started the podcast basically with Luke Sando. I already watched so many episodes, I always wanted to be a part of what he was doing. You know, the supplements and the whole brand, it's all about hardcore bodybuilding, and that's what I'm all about, that's what this channel is all about, so I honestly don't think there is a better fit for me out there. And also, you guys might know that I was always a huge fan of Samsung's physique for years, maybe that's what caught Food's attention, I don't know. But anyways, I'm sponsored by Hostile now, if you guys need a discount code, you can just use the code EVEN10, you get 10% discount and I get some commission, so thank you guys in advance. Now let's start this video with, actually, a Hostile sponsored athlete. Lead, Samson Dauda, who just posted an insane freaking physique update. What the hell is this right here? The last time Samson posted a really impressive physique update, he was like, I don't know, eight weeks out, something like that. And when I saw it, I said immediately, this guy is winning this year's Mr. Olympia. And I got some heat for that, for just saying it like that after, one, after seeing one photo. But I'm gonna say it again, man, I mean, I'm seeing all these guys, I'm seeing what Hadley looks like, I'm seeing what Derek looks like, nobody is impressing me as much as Samson, and you guys know that he's taller and bigger than all these guys, and his conditioning right now at 5 weeks out, it's better than it ever was, and guys, please do not tell me that I'm being biased about Samson now, since I'm sponsored by Hostile, that is definitely not a part of the contract, I get to be honest, I get to say what I think, if I think Derek is better, I'll say it, if I think Hardy is better, I'll say it, that's not an issue, Hunter Lebron is not sponsored by the Hostile, but he's coached by Ben Chow, and I'm actually talking more to Ben Chow than I'm talking to Fuad on this deal, and actually I was brutally honest about Hunter and his last edition, and Ben actually texted me and he was okay with what I said, you know, I was, I was honest, I was criticizing him, yeah, sure, but that's the main thing basically about his channel, that's the main thing about me, I'm always gonna say what I think, and uh, no sponsorship is gonna change that. So, Samson Dauda, once again, I am super impressed with this physique, man, I do believe very strongly that this guy should be the next Mr. Olympia. There was also this uh, guest posing that he did, uh, but I didn't want to cover it really because the photo, the video was taken from a distance. You can't really see, you know, his conditioning. You can't see his legs. He's just, you know, there flexing, and he does look amazing. You know, I think he's, he, I think his arms are looking actually bigger this year. Chest, I mean, everything really. I know how crazy it sounds, but so far Samson has been improving from show to show, and I don't know when is that gonna stop. I mean, <laughs> yeah, he's almost 38, I believe, right now, and it's crazy that he's still making progress. But the progress has been happening so far from every show to the next show. I don't even know how he keeps progressing, but he just keeps doing it, and I believe he can probably progress even more. I know Ronnie Cullen progressed when he was like 43. You know, Sean Roden won the Mr. Olympia at 43, so I believe Samson has still improvements to make. But I think this year, I think he might have done enough. Now, of course, there's five more weeks. He needs to dial in completely to get truly shredded, truly dry. And I think, even though, even though you guys don't like that, I think he needs to get those glutes shredded in order to win the Mr. Olympia. You know, when he stands next to Derek, and also Hardy, if he brings it out on classic conditioning... And if those guys have peeled glutes, and Samson doesn't, it's gonna be a huge difference. And I don't think they'll let him win it without shredded glutes. So that's the main thing, even though bodybuilding should not be all about shredded glutes, I know, I know, but it's a big deal, it is, you know. That's where you show how conditioned you are. And I feel like this year that might be the case with Samson. I actually think it will be. I don't think his glutes are gonna be, you know, as shredded as Derek Lunsford's. But I think they're gonna be lean enough. And also, he's not really flexing them when he's hitting the back double bicep. He's kind of, you know, pulling the hips out, making his adductors and his hamstrings really show, and his lats as well. So he just needs to be, like, lean enough in that area and just really lean everywhere else. And with his size, with his shape, his symmetry, and on top of it all, with his height as well. You know, guys, Mr. Olympia was always about a big man. You know, Ronnie Coleman was about Samson's height. Or like back in the 90s, Dorian was bigger than some of those guys, and he was beating them because of that. 
Jay Cutler was a massive bodybuilder, even though maybe some years some other bodybuilders could have beaten him because they were in better condition, but Jay was huge, and I think that, that plays a role even today. And also, Samson has the aesthetics, which is very important these days. So I'm betting on him for sure, but if he brings conditioning. So far, it looks like he's going to, but maybe he messes it up along the way, I'm not sure. At this point, I do think he's going to win the Mr. Olympia. Alright, the next thing we got is Chris Bumstead's announcement. And honestly, I was not expecting this from Chris. So, he basically made an announcement. It seemed like he was gonna retire before the Mr. Olympia, or say that he's gonna retire after the Mr. Olympia. That's what we all thought. That was the main thing we all thought. But no, apparently, it's just him partnering with Jim Shark, actually becoming a part owner of Jim Shark. I mean... Can we call this clickbait? Yeah, I think so. I think this is clickbait. Is this... Is he a sellout now? I mean, I'm honestly very disappointed in Chris. This is very much unlike him. Using people like this to just announce, you know, his brand. I mean, it's awesome for him. He's my age. Actually, I'm 28 still. I'm gonna turn 29 soon. But, you know, he's my age and he's a part owner of Jim Shark and Ron Trishan. And he's basically a business savvy. He, he's super, super successful, super popular, super accomplished. That's all great. You know, we all love Chris Bumstead. But why doing stuff like this? Like, was this really necessary? Couldn't have he just announced that? I mean, just be making a post. Everybody would still be talking about it. Doing this, clickbaiting us making us all speculate and believe he's gonna announce retirement or uh, switch to the open or like do an open show or something like that. There was some talk that he was gonna just introduce a new product, supplement product, but it's pretty much the same thing. You know, I'm, I'm disappointed. I don't like this. I mean, yeah, I guess it's a good business move, but he's losing integrity by doing this. And I honestly don't think he accomplished that much by doing this. If he just posted this video without making that countdown and naming it uh, public service announcement. I think he could have done probably the same thing, accomplished the same thing. Now he just lost a little bit of credibility. He made his story as well. I'm not going to read it. It's basically just him, you know, saying that he's happy, that he's with Gymshark, that he became a part owner, that he's working with them, that they're a good brand for him and so on. And that's all great. I'm happy for him for that, but... I'm just calling it as it is, and I know this is gonna be an unpopular opinion, I know all of you guys are crazy fans of, of Chris Bumstead, but I don't know, man, and maybe I'm wrong for saying all this, but that's the way I feel, however you guys feel, whatever you think, uh, tell me down below. Alright, and finally, we got a new physique update from Rafael Brandau, and this guy was kind of forgotten, really. After the Arnold Classic, when he took that third spot right after Hadi and Samson, the two very top guys at the Mr. Olympia, he most certainly was a hot topic. People talked about him as the potential top six guy. But then, you know, as we saw the other guys, all the other guys, we kind of forgot about Rafael Brando. And, I mean, did he make progress in the meantime? I don't know. We'll see. But at six weeks out right now... He does look good. He keeps getting better. And I think with this guy is also like with Samson, like he has the aesthetics. And that's a very, very important thing these days. Maybe because of that, he can place higher than some other people who are, let's say, better than him on paper. But maybe they will punish them for their midsections, for their wide waist and so on. And actually, they'll put Raphael above some of those guys. He has a lot of size, he is not the biggest guy on that stage, but he has a lot of size, and he can get very conditioned, the thing with him is like, he eats a ton of food, to just maintain his metabolism, to maintain his size, he has a super fast, crazy metabolism, in one interview he actually said that like, his low days were 300 grams of carbs, and he had like, a lot of high days of like, 600, and that's how he got <laughs> shredded for the Arnold Classic, so, conditioning is not gonna be an issue this year for the Mr. Olympia, but fullness and size, that's the main thing. He needs to maintain as much as possible, get just lean enough. And I definitely do see him in the top 10. Where in the top 10? Well, if Bechrus doesn't show up, I can see him 9th. As far as beating guys like Martin Fitzwater, Brandon Curry, I don't know. I don't really see him beating Martin, but maybe Brandon. Maybe Brandon falls down to 9th and Rafael gets 8th. That's a possibility. I don't know. But definitely somebody who we should not sleep on. 
Oh, and we got one more thing, actually. Tony O'Burton pulled out of Mr. Olympia. He is not gonna do the show. Why? Well, him and his coach did a podcast, and basically his coach said that the reason why he's gonna pull out is because they never really had an off-season. They never had a like a, like an off period, and they need to think about his health and so on. And maybe that's true, partly, maybe, completely, but really, I don't know. I, I'm thinking they probably pulled out because... They they can realize that there, there is no chance of Tonio placing uh, in that top 10 again, you know. Maybe actually top 10, you know, if Becruz doesn't show up, and then after Brandon Curry, Martin Fitzwater, and Rafael Brandau, all these guys uh, beat Tonio Burton this year, I mean Martin and, and, and Rafael, even though Rafael was very much off at the Euro Classic Brazil, he still managed to beat a very good Tonio Burton, so there is no chance of Tonio beating him. Tonio was actually 8th last year at the Mr. Olympia. This year, if he's lucky, if he truly peaks 100%, he can be 10th, which would be worse than last year. But if he takes some time off, if he does an off-season, grows, puts on, puts on some more muscle, because he's definitely one of the smaller guys. You know, he has a small frame, he's a former 212-er, so he needs to put on more muscle, be just much more massive, and then, you know, he can actually be a good threat to that, like, top 8 again. But this year, top 10 would be the best case scenario, and that would be like two spots worse than last year. So maybe that's also a reason why he pulled out, but I don't know. Whatever you guys think, tell me down below in the comment section if you guys enjoyed this video. Give it a thumbs up for more videos like this, guys. Stay tuned, subscribe, and if you need a 10% discount on hostile supplements, just use the code EVEN10. Thank you guys so much for watching. See you soon. All the best, and bye-bye.